our first scholarship recipient of the night lives out loud in every way, from mentoring youth and peers to serving as co-president of her school's Gay Straight Alliance. She facilitates change through dedication, whether it's creating lessons focused on LGBTQ history or speaking for LGBTQ inclusivity in health classes. She's ensuring that everyone feels represented and valued. Please welcome scholarship winner, Zoe Bracken. First of all, I would like to thank you all for being here tonight and supporting an organization that has been very important to me. I would also like to thank Live Out Loud for their generosity and for honoring me here tonight. I cannot put into words how shocked and thrilled I am. Live Out Loud has been extremely inf influential in helping me to develop a sense of purpose, safety, and acceptance within a community. Their work has helped my school's Gender Sexuality Alliance grow both in size and in purpose. Live Out Loud has given me the opportunity to listen to incredible stories and meet inspiring people. These individuals who have thrived in their communities not in spite of their sexual and gender orientation, but in tandem with it, have become role models for me and my peers. Watching LGBTQ plus individuals who are successful, strong, and intelligent has erased any doubt that, sex that sexual orientation might hold me back in life. When I was younger, my parents would meet with my teachers who would give them feedback on my schoolwork. The one thing I always seemed to get in trouble for was talking. It wasn't that I didn't pay attention in class or that I gave up on working hard, but I couldn't help it. I've always started a conversation, whether it was with the girl who always sat alone, a friend, or even with my teachers. It took me a long time to realize the potential power that these conversations held. Last year, I was having a conversation with my former health teacher and football coach. I brought up the seemingly heterosexual focus of the part of the curriculum that dealt with sex and intimacy. It seemed that all the contexts in which we discussed STI prevention, healthy relationships, and sex in general were based off of the assumption that we were all straight. He hadn't meant anything by this, and I consider him to be a very accepting individual, but I, kn I knew that for someone out there, this fact about the class can make them question if their sexual orientation was normal, or it can make them feel excluded from the conversation. This dialogue resulted in somewhat of an overhaul of certain parts of the health curriculum. That five-minute conversation has the potential to leave students long after I graduate sitting in a classroom and having their truth validated. No matter how un uncomfortable a conversation may seem, if we shy away from discussing our beliefs, our voices will never be heard. Thank you.